there are many functions that we can execute on our data in order to prepare it for visualization. The first function we'll be seeing here is going to be the filtering function. And we're going to be executing that by looking at date. And we're going to be entering into the gear. And we're going to go over to filter. There are many ways you can restrict your date field. And the first one is going to be the is in list. The is in list is going to allow us to select specific values that we want to choose. And only these values are going to be the ones which are going to be displayed and used for data analysis. If I hit apply, you can see that our data has become shortened and all of the values are going to be falling on the date 16-2012 or 1-3-2012. Let's come back. Here, if you look at the not in list, it's going to be making sure that these values are not going to be inside our list. You can see there's a cross mark that is made across this. And honestly speaking, these two are not going to be as widely used because what you have to do here is you have to select a specific value yourself. And we don't want to be handpicking values when there are going to be millions of values that we're analyzing. What you're going to be doing more often is using these comparison operators, which allow you to specify a specific condition. And then according to that condition, it's going to filter the records for you. And you don't have to do any handpicking in that case. So for this case, we're going to be working with the between function. So let's go over to between. Let's select the start date. And here we're going to be starting at January 2013. The first. And here we'll be ending on December 2013 on the 31st. Let's apply our filter. And in order to just make sure that all of our values are going to be correctly configured. Let's just come over here and let's look at the sort. Let's do an ascending sort. The first value here appears to be on the January of 1st. If we come back and do a sort, do a descending sort, the last value was registered on the 31st of December. So we know now that no values from 2012 or 2014 have been included inside this column. You will be seeing some sort of a tab over here open up and this tab is going to be showing you all the restrictions you have placed on your data. This also occurs when you come over to visualization and if you add a date column to your dimensions, remove this and add it again, you'll be seeing that there is a restriction placed up here where you see a funnel and a funnel basically means that a filter has been placed. You can see you can add filters in the visualization aspect as well but we'll be seeing this in a later lecture. Let's come back to prepare, and let's walk through a couple more modifications that we can make. In order to make sure our data is readable, what we can do here is we can double click on the line and make sure this reads something like product lines. Maybe we have a confusion about what this is going to be, and by typing it as product lines, we know exactly what's going to be inside the data here. Another thing that we can do is we can actually rename this from the sidebar. So if I click on this and come over to rename, here I can change the name and hit apply. In SAP, one common theme you will notice is you can find many ways of doing the same function. So here you could have double clicked, you could have come over to this gear button and come over to rename, or you could have come over to the sidebar and click on rename. And if you just forget how something is done, you can just intuitively double click or right click and you're going to be presented with the function you want to execute. Here we saw three functions that we can execute on our data, the filtering function, the sorting function, and the renaming function. Let's move along to the next lecture and we'll be looking at more functions such as the concatenating function and the splitting function.